think we are what we read, the man, the internet, famous, and anonymous, pulp fiction, and high art, and a 20 second flash animation, black and white words, and rainbow fonts, tumbling down the screen, everything, and nothing, someone, and no one, European, American, Australasian, and mad, I'm 24, 7, full endless, never sleeping, miss pass bulletin, YouTube video, spam bot, porn bot, Bag right expensive, old man, young boy, daring, sex toy, creative and apathetic. I am here and now, but then and there, twice daily on shoutcast. Point provider, your leader, missile, Nazi, communist, with a million friends in a one night stand that never ends. I'm Alpha and Omega, your favorite author, and your nemesis, or at least that is, until the power cuts. Until the power cuts. There is no greater power in the world today than that wielded by the manipulators of public opinion. No king or pope of old, no conquering general or high priest ever disposed of a power even remotely approaching that of the few dozen men who control the mass media of news and entertainment. Their power is not distant and impersonal. It reaches into every home and it works its will during nearly every waking hour. It is the power that shapes and moulds the mind of virtually every citizen, young or old, rich or poor, simple or sophisticated. The mass media form for us our image of the world and then tell us what to think about that image. Essentially everything we know or think we know about events outside our own neighborhood or circle of acquaintances comes to us via our daily newspaper, our weekly news magazine, our radio or our television. It is not just the heavy-handed suppression of certain news stories from our newspapers or the blatant propaganda of history-distorting TV docudramas that characterizes the opinion manipulating techniques of the media masters. They exercise both subtlety and thoroughness in their management of the news and the entertainment that they present to us. For example, the way in which the news is covered, which items are emphasized and which are played down, the reporter's choice of words, tone of voice and facial expressions. The wording of headlines, the choice of illustrations, all of these things subliminally and yet profoundly affect the way in which we interpret what we see or hear. On top of this, of course, the columnists and the editors remove any remaining doubt from our minds as to just what we are to think about it all, employing carefully developed psychological techniques they guide our thought and opinion so that we can be in tune with the in-crowd, the beautiful people, the smart money. They let us know exactly what our attitude should be towards various types of people and behaviour by placing those people or that behaviour in the context of a TV drama or situation comedy and having the other TV characters react in the politically correct way. In short, they seek to bend our minds and our will and to mentally enslave us. This is slavery on a level never seen before. With bodies in chains, our minds can still be free. But when your mind is caged, you have nothing left.